Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be making text bubbles from iMessages, and they're totally dynamic too. Mikey's Production Tips is brought to you by Cinema Spice, After Effects tools, video overlays and backgrounds, and sound effects. Now, what I mean by dynamic is I can come in here and let's take this text and write anything, and it'll automatically size the bubble to the text. I can even do another line and it'll size it perfectly. So we're going to split this tutorial up into two parts, well in one video, but the two things are we're going to create first the bubble uh, out of shape layers and how to create this perfectly curved uh, tail on it. And then we're going to add some expressions so it will automatically scale and size the correct way for whatever text we put in there. So let's get started. New composition. And let's add a background to it. So just a new solid and white is fine. So first we're going to use a shape layer. So make sure that your layer is not selected because if it's selected then these mask, these tools, these shape tools become a mask tool. So if it's unselected, then you can see I've got a color there. Select it, color's gone. So when your layer is selected, it's a mask. When it's not, it's a shape layer tool. So I want to use the um, rounded rectangle tool and try to make it centered. But then I'm going to come in down to the contents, down to transform and make sure that position is centered. On the rectangle part, uh, let's give it, like say 800 by 200, and we can come in and change that later. And the roundness, let's go with 50. So that's kind of the initial shape. And I am gonna do a little bit of expressions right now because I need this corner, right here, the bottom left corner, to everything to scale from that. So as I change my size, you can see right now it's scaling from the center. I want it to scale from that corner. And so how we do that is we need to change the position as we change the size. So we're gonna add an expression to the position right here in the rectangle. So Alt or Option, click on position and go value plus, and then in square brackets, the first one we're going to pick whip that size 800 divided by two and then comma, then pick whip that second one, 200, divided by two, and close that with a square bracket. And now you can see, as I make the size bigger that way, it stayed cornered. And this one is the wrong way, actually. So that second piece, we need to come in here. You see the comma right there? And let's make that a negative. There we go. I want it to move up. Okay, so let's bring that back to 800 by 200. Now, I want to come in here and you can see that says 400 and negative 100. So I want to make that zero, zero. So in order to do that, I'm gonna click on position and type negative 400 and then 100. And that zeroes it out again. And you can see that is right in the middle. So that's just some stuff you do beforehand to make sure that when we come in and add the expressions, so this will automatically uh, grow and change with the text, that it'll, it'll stay put. Okay, now let's make the tail. Uh, let's do some organization first. So this first rectangle, let's just call this the bubble. And what I'm gonna do is add a group to this in the content, so just click on add group. And let's name this group tail. Now this rectangle path and the fill, I'm going to copy that. So highlight them both, copy, and then in the tail, I'm going to paste that in there. Now I'm gonna come in and delete the expression I just put because I don't need it. And then in this tail, I'm going to add another group because we're actually going to have two groups. So I'm going to make some subtractions and merging paths. And so let's just call this one fill. 
I'm going to duplicate that, and then the second one, cut. Okay. So let's go to the fill one. And under position, let's just move this. Actually, it doesn't need to be that wide, so let's just go 200 by 200. It just needs to be a little square. Now I'm moving this um, to the left, and you can see I want to put it about right here, so there's just a little dip up right there. Now let's go to the cut one, make that 200 by 200. And this one I want to move so it's exactly right there, which looks like it's going to be negative 500. So the, the right side of it lines up perfectly with the left side of the big bubble um, shape that we just made. Now let's go into this and into the tail group and let's add a merge paths. And in merge paths, let's add a subtract. And it looks like I have things in the wrong order. So um, when some, it subtracted the wrong way. So what I need to do is this fill and this cut. I just need to switch the layer order. So let's put the fill on top. And then you can see it made that. The last thing we do have is we have this up at top, which we need to get rid of. So how to do that is this cut group is we add another rectangle to that. So what I'm going to do is add a rectangle it's in the wrong spot now, but I'll move it later so that it covers that top little tail and comes down right almost to the point where it reaches that. And let's move this down into the cut group. Okay. So that's it. And we've got this, this nice tail here and it looks pretty good. So and I, if I come into the bubble and into the rectangle, I can move this, move that, and everything seems to work pretty good. So that is the first part of just building um, the shape itself. So keep this contents open where it has the size because this is what we're going to use when we add the expressions for the text. So let's bring in also a text layer. So text layer. And I've got it justified to the right, but it needs to be to the left because that is where you know the text is going to grow to the left. That's where the little tail is. So the expression we're going to be using is called source rect at time. And how it works is it'll take, it, you put in a source, which would be this text layer, and it will define the rectangle around it. And it'll, at a given point in time, tell you how big that rectangle is. And we can use that data to then create this text bubble around it to the right shape and size. So let's first go to this size of the rectangle path. I'm going to add an expression to that. So if you've closed and collapsed all your layers, we can come back into that. So that's in the bubble shape. Let's get the name, text bubble. So if you go into the contents, then we've got one called bubble rectangle path and it's the size of that rectangle path. So let's add an expression to that alter option on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and I'm going to add some variables here. So first W equals 800 and then H equals 200 and with semicolon on both of those. And then let's just put in square brackets. W comma H. Close the square bracket. And that should be the, the same thing because we already had 800 and 200 in there. I'm just declaring some variables and then applying those variables to the, you know, the X and the Y. But now what I can do is I can just create an expression for that variable and it'll automatically stick it in there. Keeps it a little bit neater. And so what I'm going to do is for the width, let's highlight the 800 and then Use the pick whip, looks like a little cinnamon roll right there, and grab your text layer. And then while your cursor is still there, I didn't click on anything, type period, then source, rect, make sure the rect is capitalized, at, capital at, 
capital T for time, and then open and close parentheses. You don't put anything in there unless you want to specify a specific, specific time, but we're not going to. And then another period, type width. And right now, if I were to move this over, that rectangle is now the same width as um, the, the bubble layer and the rectangle are the same width. I want to give it some padding. So let's add to this before the semicolon, like 70 pixels. And that looks pretty good. And that's how you do that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this expression that I just wrote, highlight it and copy it. And then let's go in and paste it over the 200. But except right here where it says width, let's come in here and change that to dot height. Okay. Now let's test it out. So let's go in the text layer and let's write something. Okay, looks like it works. Second line. Oh, that's where we're having some troubles. So when I type the second line, it makes the, the text bubble bigger, except for my text stays down low when I want it to go up higher. So what we need to do is another expression, but this time on the text layer, on the position. So let's click uh, highlight the text layer, hit P, it'll bring up the position, and then Option or Alt, click on the stopwatch, and we can put in an expression here. With this, let's add an expression, start by typing value, plus, and then in square brackets, zero, comma, and then this one we need to use the pick whip, select its own layer, or we can write this layer, dot source, capital rect, capital at, capital time, open and close parentheses, dot height. Let's see if we did this right. I might have to come in and adjust this and end with a square bracket. All right. Yep, yep, yep. I got it. I added this one, I should be subtracting it. So let's value subtract. Okay. Line one, line two, line three. It's working pretty good. I didn't have that quite lined up in the center. Because on these, I always put value minus, value plus, things like that. That means I can move this around and it's not gonna adjust really anything. So it's a good way of kind of lining things up later. All right, looks like it's working pretty good. So that's, that's it, and I hope you learned something cool. I think it's a really kind of a neat thing here. You can turn this into your own template if you want. You could turn it into a motion graphics template if you have the latest version of After Effects and Premiere. That's really cool as well, and then you can just open this up in Premiere and be able to swap out all the text. This is something you use when you're doing work, you know, paid work for a client kind of a thing. And so uh, hopefully this is something you can use. And if you have any questions, Feel free to ask. Just put it down in the comments below. And if you have, you know, maybe even a tutorial suggestion, that's, you know, put that down there as well. I love to um, hear if you have any good ideas. I love to help you out and ask, uh, answer questions as well. And if you haven't done so, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.